right, guys, we got the Cleveland Browns, the 2023 Raskers, of course, coming off back-to-back -back seasons where they were, mm, but really, this year, who knows? That's kind of what I got. Either way to go, let's go right into the roster. Really, no one's talking about them. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Clean rounds, 2023 roster grades. I hope you guys enjoyed the Cleveland Browns 2023 roster grades. Of course, this Browns team is looking to go into a year where they actually make the playoffs, unlike the past two years. Last year, again, you kind of throw last year away in at least some form, of course, without their starting quarterback for a for most of the season, again, 11 games. Uh, they were pretty competitive towards the end of the season. Again, overall, it was a pretty inconsistent season, but it wasn't terrible, I guess. They were meh. But obviously, coming into this year, they're looking to be a lot better. Honestly, flying under the radar a little bit. And again, they are the Browns, so you don't expect too much from them. But we'll see what they can do. They have a pretty solid roster. I'm really excited to grade them. Let's get right into the quarterback position. Yup, here is Deshaun Watson. All right, guys. Deshaun Watson, of course, is the quarterback of the Cleveland Browns, who they traded three first-round picks for and gave him a five-year, $230 million fully guaranteed contract. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they're putting a lot of stake in him. And last year in his six games, I'm not going to lie, I don't think he was that bad. Was he good? No, that's for sure. He definitely wasn't good. But I, I'm all, in my opinion, he was still making some of the plays that we saw in the past. It was just a lot of rust and a lot of just, like, indecision. I do think this year, though, he will be a lot more productive overall. I'll be honest, at least half of his incompletions, like, like actual incompletions, were, like, forced. I mean, you know, there were forced incompletions were throwaways. He, he did throw the ball away a lot. Did take a couple too many sacks, though, I'll be honest there. Like, he did take 20 sacks in, in six games, which is not good. I mean, it's not terrible. Like, what is that? It's not four sacks. It's like three sacks. So that, that isn't good. But Deshaun Watson for sure could be better this year. I do expect him to be a lot better. Like, maybe 30 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, something like that. Maybe not 30 touchdowns, but he'll throw a good amount of touchdowns. Yards will be around 4,000 yards. Maybe not hit exactly that. But I do think he'll be pretty good in this system. I like what, what he got there. At the worst case, I think he could. I don't think he'll be elite this year, but I think he'll be fine. Josh Dobbs is the backup. It could be worse. Again, he played with um, Titans last year. was pretty uh, underwhelming. Uh, again, outside of that gear with the um, Titans, he really doesn't get any other starting thing. Again, wasn't terrible last year. Honestly, you could argue at some points was more productive than Ryan Daniel even. So, yeah, Josh Dobbs isn't the greatest backup, but he works. Dorian Thompson Robinson, the reason they drafted him is pretty simple. He can run. He's got a really solid arm. His touch and overall distance on his throws might, might not be the greatest, but he has a miss. So, like, he can really put it in there. And he's a he actually is pretty good at reading the defense overall. So, that's a big thing with him. And he, again, also a dual threat guy. And he played there for a um, at, um, UCA for, like, four years. So, Dorian Thompson Robinson is not the it's not a bad quarterback at all. I actually like him a lot here. As well, Kellen Mond is on this team. I mean, yeah, he's kind of there. Uh, again, he got drafted by the Vikings in the third round, and not gonna lie, um, was really disappointing. He didn't get any playing time, and then he got cut, and now he's on the Browns. That's kind of what I got with him, though. Again, just can't really throw. <laughs> not great as a fourth stringer, but whatever. He's there. Let's get right into the Deshaun Watson grade. In relation to Deshaun Watson, I gotta give him a B minus because last year he was like probably a C overall because he had some really good highs and really bad lows, some in the middle. So. I still think he's a good quarterback, but I have to give him a B minus because again, we still don't know what he is right now because he was out for a year and a half. Like that's kind of what it's like. And as well, I mean, the backups could be worse. So I want to give him a B, but that would just kind of be like whatever. So he's pro he's, he's talent wise probably a top ten quarterback. You just can't do that though because no one really knows what he's actually like right now. No one knows if he's really that great because again, we haven't he hasn't really gotten to like. Play, he took a year and a half off. Like, that's just kind of what it's like. So, 35 points for Deshaun Watson. Time for the running back core. It's kind of simple here, but whatever. All right, Nick Chubb is a top five running back in the league. He has been really good. I mean, outside of that one game against Buffalo, he had basically a good game every week. Again, he had uh, a tie with career high, 12 touchdowns, 5, uh, 1,500 yards. He's had 1,000 yards the past four years. Uh, over five yards per carry in every single season. He is really good. And also, um, ticked up the receiving numbers a little bit. Maybe not as much as 2019, but he was still um, being a really good, uh, productive there. Yeah, they don't have Nick, um, Cremont anymore, but I don't think that's terrible because they're going younger with Jerome Ford, who, yeah, didn't get many carries last year, but his fifth round pick out of Cincinnati. He is a big play back who is pretty good in the receiving game. I mean, he's not great, but the reason he will get a lot more carries. 
I do think he'll be a pretty big guy for them on third down as well. Demetri Val Fallon Jr. is also a guy who can catch out of the backfield. Again, we didn't get to see much of him last year, like, at all. Again, in 2021, he got a couple more carries, and he actually was a really good, again, really solid receiving back. I, I really want to see what they'll use with him. Rick and Cheese, I didn't use him as much last year, but Demetri Fallon Jr., I do think it's a good receiving back. So they got two guys can, who can get that done. Again, Jerome Ford will probably get a lot more carries than Demetri Fallon, but again, those two guys will definitely get a couple touches. So they're not the greatest guys as backups, but they kind of work out. And then Johnny Kel Keller Jr., I, I, um, again, he got drafted by the Rams. I'm not going to lie. I don't know how the heck he's on the roster. He'll probably be in the practice squad, not, um, to be honest there. So, yeah, outside of Nick Chubb, it could be better, but I don't think their backups are terrible. Again, the fact that Nick Chubb really hasn't gotten, like, a, th like a really workhorse load, which I think is good for any back, but I do think they'll probably, they might resound, um, Kareem out. I really don't know for sure. I still got to give him an A, though, because it is Nick Chubb, and they got at least some depth there. I don't think, it's like, it's kind of like the Saquon Barkley situation, but it, 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 even then, they've got guys who, who are going to do what the, they need to do. Again, and behind it by all, a good offensive line, I don't really expect them to really blow it. So, to be Fallon Jr. and Jerome Ford, just don't stink, and I think it'll be fine. 9, 18, 27, uh, what is that? 33 points. For that running back room, time for the wide receiver core. And when looking at this Browns receiving core, I think it's a weird group. I mean, it, it's actually deeper than anyone, actually, really anyone would give it credit for unless you're a diehard Browns fan because it's actually deeper than it's been for a while. First off, Mari Cooper, he's the number one receiver. I mean, there's really no way around it. He had his best year since probably 2018, um, 2019, to be completely honest. He, yeah, he had his best year since 2019. He, like, I think he was actually even better than 2019 because he, again, had a career high nine touchdowns. But even then, again, he did have some games where he wasn't super consistent. Again, wasn't, didn't have, you know, maybe not as good as 2019. But, again, wasn't super consistent. But I do think, again, when he, um, if he can get a little more consistent than last year, again, really good job for Stefan, kind of like an emergence as a deeper threat type of guy and also very physical. I think that's huge for them. At, but if he can be a, a, become, a li uh, become a little more reliable, I think that would be huge. Elijah Moore will be their slot guy. Again, really good yak receiver. He just simply didn't really get a ton of playing time last year. Uh, which I think isn't great. In 2021, same, uh, he actually played a, li a little more. But either way, really weird season with Elijah Moore. But um, uh, again, they he got they got him from Cleveland. He's a good slack guy. Again, maybe not the greatest hands, but he works out. That's really the theme. We'll get to Cedric Tillman in a minute. But Donovan Peoples Jones is a straight up deep threat. Um, who's actually actually a pretty good physical guy as well. I'm not gonna lie though, he actually can make some plays as a possession receiver though. I think he's a really underrated target for them. And I do think he again he, he's. A, Maybe not versatile, but he, he definitely, again, more of that deep threat physical type of receiver, but he has been able to get underneath a little more than you'd expect. And as well, Cedric Tillman, again, the guy out of Tennessee, third round pick, he will be the guy who will probably be their possession receiver, the guy they really want to get the ball to underneath. He basically, did you check down Magnet, he'll be the guy, if no one's open, they'll get him the football. That's kind of what it's like there. Marquis Goodman, straight up deep threat. I mean, didn't really play. Yeah, did he? Yeah, he was with the Seahawks last year. Before he got hurt, he was actually pretty good. So, for, I mean, actually, the past two seasons, he really had a career resurgence after, right? Really, not, again, not, not playing in 2020. And, uh, but yeah, past years have been pretty good. Again, not, not even close to the 2017 season. But don't be surprised if he gets a couple tar deep targets. Like, he, he's definitely a really, he's still really fast. David Bell, really disappointing rookie season. I won't expect much out of him from this year. Simply, he didn't create any separation, and he, again, really good catch radius, but didn't really show that last year. Jalen Darden, uh, is he the returner? I guess he's not. I mean, I don't know why he's on this team, but uh, he's there. I guess that's what we get there. Maybe end around, stuff like that. Anthony Schwartz, kind of like Marquise Goodwin, except worse and younger. I mean, that's kind of what he got with him. He simply just didn't make any catches last year. I'm sorry. Like, he just didn't get open. And he just simply super raw still. He, again, at Auburn, get just didn't really do a lot last year, and just struggled to get on the field to be honest in this just grand scheme of things. So he can stay healthy. I mean, I guess they got something there again. Either you can grant senior might see. So they honestly have like I mean you don't want to see Jalen Dard, but Anthony Shorts definitely needs to be a lot better than he was last year. And not gonna lie, I gotta give this receiving core a B plus because yeah. They, they're going to probably rely on, they got a lot of guys who can do a lot of different stuff, but they've got three receivers where I'm like, Donovan Peoples-Jones is a number two receiver in my opinion. I'm not going to lie there. And Elijah Moore, yeah, he's not the greatest, but he's a good slot option. He can break big plays. And they've got good depth in their receiving core. I mean, I'm not going to give it an A because, again, like, they don't have no, another really, really good receiver. And they don't, again, they don't have, like, a super, like, a technician in the slot. Elijah Moore's a good route runner, really good, yeah, a pretty good yak receiver, but he's still not insane just yet. So, if he can get, if he grows a little more, I do think they'll be a lot better. But the shooting core is really solid. I gotta give that, what is that, 9, 18, 27 points? It's a good group for sure. Time for the tight end position. Of course, tight end, they do have a top 10 guy in David Njoku, who had a pretty solid year last year. Four touchdowns, 628 yards. 
and on 58 catches again his best year since 2018 really good year for sure bounce back to say the um, to be honest again maybe didn't have a 71 yard touchdown like 2021 but still was pretty good his blocking's never been great but for a first round pick i mean he's been good i guess uh he's definitely a solid tenant for sure though i, I, I like david and joke jordan akins had the worst backup again he will get you he'll do you some justice in receiving him had five touchdowns actually last year solid blocker Pretty decent um, backup tight end. I I'm fine with him for sure. Even maybe not as great as a starter, but he's okay. Harrison Bryant, um, established guy for sure. Uh, for a fourth round pick, I mean, he has been. He's been basically what you expect. I mean, not great receiver, decent blocker. Harrison Bryant works as a third string tight end for sure. Don't want him doing anything more than that. I mean, as a backup last year wasn't terrible though. Zero, um, Zero Mitchell Payton out of FAU. Not gonna lie, only saw him play one game. I think it was against who? That I think it was against Clemson. And even then, like he wasn't great in that game. Uh, but after that, I mean, they got three tight ends. It's, I mean, Austin Duper, Jordan Aikens, probably interchangeable at this point. That's what I got for those three. Okay, the tight end position, I'll give him a B plus. Uh, yeah, I'll give him a B plus. Should I? Yeah. So, uh, David Njoku is a top 10 tight end, in my opinion. Be probably 10-9, around that range. He's a good tight end for sure. And just the fact they've got good depth, I don't know. Should I give him a B? I gotta give him a B plus, because there's not, again, they've got three good tight ends. Yeah, it works. They got a good one, two, three. I'll give him a B plus. That comes out to 6, 12, 18 points for that tight end position. Time for the offensive line. And looking at this, um, what it's called, Browns offensive line, Jared Phillips Jr. is probably the most average stack in the league at this point. I mean, for a number 10 pick, he hasn't been great, but he also hasn't been a bust. I mean, he's got some games where he's really good. Other games where he gets, like, five holding penalties and uh, gives up, like, four sacks. So, not very consistent at all, but I do think, yeah, yeah rounds into a decent tackle. Joel Batonio, probably the best guard in the league overall. I mean, he's really, really good. I mean, not, not as good as uh, Chris Lindstrom, but... For an older dude, he's still one of the best guards in the league. He doesn't give up any sacks. Really good run blocker. I mean, he's really good. <laughs> Colby Godson, I guess, is his backup out of Appalachian State. He's been on a couple teams. I mean, yeah, he's a backup. That's what I got. Wes Martin, I've seen a little bit of, too. He's a decent run blocker. That's about it. Dawson Deaton, I think. What happened to him? Uh, Not going to lie. No, I, I really haven't seen much of him at all. Da Dawson Deaton's on the IR, though. Ethan Pokick actually had a really good year at center after really not doing a ton with Seattle. So, for a guy who was a second-round pick, he actually had a really good uh, career renaissance last year. Luke Weip Weipler, the third, um, the sixth-round pick out of Ohio State. The reason he fell is because he had some injuries. And, not going to lie, just nothing, didn't test well at all. But, as a straight-up football player, and what I expect, I think he'll be fine. Nick Harris was their backup last year. He's not bad either. Why, again, they actually don't, I'm, I'm kind of concerned they don't have a backup left tackle, at least at this point. So, tackle depth is probably the only issue on this offensive line. I mean, Drew Forbes is not a bad backup either. Wyatt Teller, still a pretty, I mean, he was kind of average last year, but Wyatt Teller, uh, I still think he's a pretty decent tackle, I mean, guard. Again, yeah, he was, I mean, he was, he was good actually last year. 2021 and 2020 were definitely better years for him, but he was still pretty solid last year. And then again, Jack Conklin, he's kind of getting older, but actually had a decent year last year. After a struggle, um, struggling 2021 again. Did he, tear, yeah, he tore it towards ACL in 2019. Whatever. Jack Hoffman's a good tackle. James Hudson's is not a bad backup. Dewan Jones and um, Tyron um, Lentley Jr. can't play left tackle, but I mean, they can at least block when you need them to. So, overall, this offensive line is pretty good. Tackle depth isn't great, but I still got to give this offensive line an A minus. So, yeah, they're not as good as it used to be, or I mean, people presumed them to be, but they're still a really solid group. The depth could be better, but. It's still a really good offensive line, in my opinion. So, yeah, they didn't perform as well, but still whatever. 6, 12, uh, no, yeah, 18, uh, 20 points for that uh, offensive line. Time for the overall offensive grade. And straight up talent, this offense gets a B plus, which I think is fair. I mean, they are a good group. First off, again, this offensive line, the only reason they're not an A is kind of because Jedrick Mills just is whatever tackle. And their, off, and their tackle depth isn't great. So, yeah, tackle is not the greatest for them. I mean... Jack Conklin last year, I'll show you his PFF grade in the, uh, on film. Again, really good at extending. I don't know why I'm going back to him, but I'm just going to do it. Uh, but Jack Conklin last year, again, was whatever. Again, he didn't play 2020, 2021 were definitely better for him. But either way, um, Jack um, Jack Conklin's fine. This offensive line's okay, but again, t um, the, the weapon group is actually pretty good. I mean, I might be overrating this receiving core, but I actually think it's pretty good for what it's supposed to be. The only real question was Deshaun Watson, and if he's healthy, I'm not going to lie, this offense could be very, very good. Again, the fact they've got a really good run game and an offensive line, for a guy in Deshaun Watson who you could argue is a better receiving core than he did in Houston, and definitely better tight end room, uh, he, if Deshaun Watson get back the way he was, this is an elite offense. That's what I got to say. I mean, unless the wheels fall off, they should be fine. Time for this defense. All right, did you run a 4-3? So we'll be talking about basically uh, these four, three guys in linebackers. First off, JOK. 
did not play, was not healthy all last year, only played 11 games. Did he, like, he got hurt, I forgot what happened, but it wasn't a good injury. Uh, 2020, again, really good rookie year. Last year wasn't as good in coverage by any means, but he was still an impactful player. JOK, in my opinion, is a, is a fringe top, um, top 15 linebacker. He's a very solid player. For um guy that got in the second round, he's been basically as advertised. Anthony Walker Jr., of course, tore his ACL, blowing out his knee. In that week three Thursday night game against the Steelers, he's back. I hope he can stay healthy. I mean, he's a good linebacker when he's on the field. He had, what was it, one, two, three. Um, He started four years. Um, um, Yeah, basically, he started five straight years, and he was really solid in all those years. Again, above average, I'll starting middle linebacker. Just going to hope he can stay on the field. I do de- uh, expect his pursuit and his um just overall impact as a playmaker to, to decline, but... I, overall, he should be good. Uh, Jacob Zoloff, not the worst backup. I do think having Deion Jones would have been safer, but he's still a very good guy who, who did step in and played pretty well as a backup when he did start. Uh, Matthew Adams, he's just not that good. I mean, there's no, I don't know what else to say. He was okay in terms of in run defense and setting the edge, but you just really can't have him playing any sort of, like, real, like, um, like, basically putting him out there, um, um, as a sore thumb, basically, that's what, if I want to put it like that, he's basically a sore thumb in coverage. He's just not that great. Uh, Sione Takitaki, he's been the definition of a little bit below average his whole career, and he's worked it out. I mean, he's not great. He's not terrible. He's not, he's below average, but, I mean, he kind of works, because they don't ask him to do too much. Tony Fields, uh, actually was good in coverage last year. I, I like what I saw from him, but I gotta give him this. He missed a lot of tackles, and I do think that'll come back to bite him this year, but overall, these six linebackers, it's a pretty decent group. At least they have depth in this linebacking core. I mean, JOK and Anthony Walker Jr., yeah, they both got hurt last year, but they should be fine. I gotta give this linebacking core a seat boss. Sione Takitaki isn't great, but again, it's well, it's whatever. That comes out to 9, 18 points for that linebacking core. It works out. Time for the defensive line. Not talking about the pass rush. Miles Gary, you can argue he's the best um, edge rusher in the league. I mean, he's been the most consistent guy, in my opinion. Uh, again, he has had how, back, what was it, three straight years with, <laughs> with uh, yeah, three straight years with 12 plus sacks. I mean, that's really good. 10 plus sacks. Uh, He's had 10 plus sacks in five straight seasons, and not in 2021. I mean, 2020 is on track to have like 17 back-to-back 16 sack seasons as well. Yeah, he was my, he wasn't getting as much consistent pressure last year. He had some games where he really did struggle at some points, not the whole game, but at some points. So for a guy like Miles Garrett, who I expect to be great, I think he get just a little more consistent. That would be big for me. Yeah, Miles Garrett is a very, is just insane. Uh, Alex Wright's also there as well. Overall, Caronquo, uh is good. I mean, again. Isaiah Thomas is actually a little under it. Did have a sack last year, and at Oklahoma, I do expect him to have a big, um, a pretty uh, big year. At least maybe not to get, get as much snaps, but he will get a lot more pass rush. Because Alex Wright is a bona fide run defender. Uh, that's basically what he is. Zedaria Smith again. He got hurt last year. I know it wasn't last year. It was two years ago. Um, but with the Vikings last year, he was good. He had ten sacks. I mean. As advertised, he's good. He's a, he's a very good passer. Just like getting older. Overall, Okoronko, again, with the Texans last year, had five sacks, was pretty good. Uh, maybe not as good as he was on the Rams overall, but he's still a good player. Isaiah McGuire, Sam Kamara, and Jermaine, uh, Jeremiah Martin, you don't want to see too much, though. Uh, Dalvin Tomlinson and Jordan Elliott. Honestly, Jordan Elliott actually got a little more pressure than I expected him to, but he was still pretty good. And Dalvin Tomlinson's still a good player, good vet. Uh, yeah, kind of about it. They, they just, they sign him, though. So, yeah, Eco will go in there, basically be a guy who just kind of creates a little bit of pressure, but more more or less just a run defender. Maurice Hurst isn't terrible either, uh, but he is older. He's like 28, yeah. He actually played with the Niners a couple years. Uh, really interesting career so far. Played with the Raiders as well. He's a good player. That's all I got there. Browns defensive line, I'll give him a B plus. I mean, Jordan Elliott's probably just about an average overall guy. I mean, he's not super consistent. You know, I'm, I see a little bit of average. Uh, Dalvin Tomlinson, solid. Uh, Zaria Smith and uh, Miles Garrett, pretty good group. Honestly, this defensive line, decent depth. I really don't have much to complain about him, other than the fact that maybe they're a little bit washed up overall um, as a group, but I do think it's still pretty good. I got to give them, what is that, 18 points for that defensive line. Now let's talk about the pass rush. All right, looking at the, um, what's it called? Uh, oh, my gosh. The... <laughs> Browns pass rush. Um, they got a good one-two punch in Miles Garrett and Darius Smith. They'll get very consistent pressure. They're fine there. Alex Wright as a again, I don't know. Again, he's kind of a bona fide pa- um the fact um bona fide um run defender. So the fact that when he's on the field, you're really not gonna get much any pressure from him isn't great. But Isaiah, Th- which you can't put Isaiah Thomas out there because yeah, he's not. He's actually like he's actually really small. If he plays small, my bad. He's kind of a finesse um, rusher, so you, you're putting your run, um, your um, run defense in jeopardy, especially when you have to have him playing seven tech and um, a lot of five eye at some point. So again, Isaiah Thomas, just you can't have him really having to play inside and get setting the edge, leverage, not his thing. 
Overall, Morocco is fine, though, the third option. And, again, interior pressure, it's not going to be great. It's going to be probably about dead average, but it could be worse. So, overall, this pass rush, I don't, I don't like it. It's, it's not super-duper deep, but it's definitely a good group. Browns, Browns pass rush, same type of thing. I'll give them a B plus. I mean, it should be similar to last year. They had good pass rush. It's, it's, again, when you have Miles Garrett, it should be fine. 36 points for that pass rush. Time for the cornerbacks. And looking at the Browns quarterbacks, cornerbacks, I, I'm not going to lie. Again, they've got, like, a good three corners. I mean, A.J. Green in the third... I mean, he's not going to be great on the field, but as a backup and a, a di in dying packages, he's actually decent in zone. I mean, man-to-man -man in the slot, balls-to-the-walls type of stuff, he's not great, but he you can actually even put him in press and he'll be decent. He's actually pretty good at jamming. But again, with a guy who's not the most athletic, but he's actually a smart guy. Um, Again, third season at Oklahoma State, I do expect him to be decent, but he's not a bad backup at all. He's, I respect him a lot. Uh, Cameron Mitchell, again, what was he, like, their seventh? Yeah, fifth round pick at Northwestern. I did talk about him a lot. You can actually put him at safety, too. Good nickel guy. You can put him on the outside a little bit, too. But, um, for sure, a guy you definitely want to see st um, stopping the run a little more. But, yeah, K Cameron Mitchell's not bad. Uh, Thomas Graham, the junior out of Oregon. Really, I wouldn't say disappointing, but for uh, a guy who's camp, six-round pick. But, uh, he's been, mm, I mean, he's been okay in preseason. He's made some plays. Uh, I do like his, la um, his length, though. He does make some plays there. And, obviously... It, um, um, when it comes to just straight up over, um, overall coverage, it's whatever. Yeah, he works. Uh, as a sixth option, obviously. Martin Emerson Jr., he was a beast last year. <laughs> he was. I mean, yeah, he's got his ball skills need a lot of work. He dropped, like, eight interceptions last year. But overall, his attitude and the way he plays with his technique, for sure. And the fact that he's really agile and he doesn't, again, he doesn't bite a ton. Really good instincts. I like Martin Emerson Jr. a lot. Just those ball skills need to improve. All uh, right, Greg Newsome, a really good nickel guy. I like how like, he's really good. But, um, he, I mean, what, um, he's really good in the nickel, just not in man, which can be an issue. He, he's definitely not great against corner routes. He definitely needs to wait for the third move on some, uh, some receivers for sure. But, yeah, Greg Newsome, good, um, good slot option. He's not great, but, yeah, he's good. Uh, Denzel Ward, he was he, he was definitely worth that um, number four pick for sure. He has been probably what they expected. Uh. Again, he has, um, didn't have as many, uh, gr like, insane plays last year. You know, uh, three interceptions. Probably want to see him return more of those. But overall, he still had a really good year. Again, not, you don't expect him like, time to cap make any tackles or anything like that. But overall, Denzel Ward is still a very, very good corner. Definitely number one. I'm saying giving this cornerback room a B plus. They got a number one. They got a number two. They got a number three. And all of them are very good. Obviously, they could, Greg Newsom could be better, but I still got this cornerback from B+, because I do think Martin Emerson Jr. could emerge in the top 10 corner this year, which might sound crazy, but he was ridiculous last year. He was really good, like really, really good. Again, AJ Green the third is not a bad depth option as well. Cameron Mitchell, I do expect to be decent overall. So, yeah, I do like this cornerback room a lot more than people give it credit for. That comes out to 6, 12, 18 points for the cornerbacks. Time for the safeties. All right, Grant Talbot is finally going to get the start again with Rodney Harrison. Uh, um, what is it? Yeah, right? Rodney Harrison. Yeah, Rodney Harrison. There's Rodney Harrison. Whatever. Rodney Harrison gone. So, yeah, he'll actually, he actually got a lot of, uh, really got the starts last year. And he was really good. Yeah, Grant Dell puts a very solid safety. After um, 20, well, yeah, like 2020, where he got injured without the whole season, pretty solid as a backup, most, mostly in 2021. 2022, though, really emerges as a guy who can make a lot of tackles from the back end. Not only that, though, he was a really big, big playmaker and also really solid in coverage. I do think Grant Dell is a really underrated player. The only issue with him is he does miss some tackles. You cannot have him play against fat, against slot option, I mean slot receivers, which I do think is a little bit of an issue, but I do think he's fine, because they got Rodney, Rodney McClellan, who can cover slot options, and is also a good tackler, he's been in the league a long time, very good vet, but he is 33, slowing down a little bit, I don't know if they want to use him against slot receivers as much, maybe more against tight ends, I do think they'll have to use him there, so they really don't have a guy out, again, Greg Newsom can't cover, again, is that the guy who's in the slot, but they when they need to basically just have safeties out, um, when it's like third, um, third and four or five, they need a guy, a safety, who can cover the slot. They don't have that right now, to be honest. Uh, Buddha Bolden, he's actually an interesting guy out of Miami. Uh, really just didn't do a lot, um, didn't do a lot in 2021, but he went undrafted. Uh, didn't play at all last year. Uh, not gonna lie, he's actually, um, I don't expect a ton from him at all. Uh, Juan Thornhill, uh, good. He's basically kind of about average. He actually played really well at the end of 2019, but since then, he's been basically the starting caliber safety. Kind of about it. Doesn't make too many bad plays. Doesn't get burned once in a while, but Basically average. Uh, DeAnthony Bell, uh, he's okay. I mean, as a backup, I wouldn't... Yeah, it's kind of... He's just fine. Yeah. 
Doesn't make too many bad plays. Doesn't make a uh, ton of great plays. Uh, does um, show um, some good technique, especially when he tackles. But not like gonna light you up or anything. He's a solid free safety. I like Grant Delpit a lot. I like what there's. Um, they just don't have a safety you can really cover in man at all. So I gotta give him a C plus here. I mean, Ryan Cloud, Ryan Cloud's supposed to be that, but again, he just got he just got in, um. What is called? He's older now, so I can't expect too much out of him. Again, it's a pretty decent cornerback. I'm um, safe to him. They've got some decent depth. Uh, D'Anthony Bell's whatever. Again, as a backup. But um, with Juan Thornhill being fine and Grant, D Grant Delpit looking to have a, gr uh, a big season, I do expect him to be break out here. But the safety room isn't crazy, so i got to give it a C plus. That comes out to 9, 18 points. Let's hit this defensive overall grade. So the range says that this defense is a C plus, but I'll give him a B minus. Uh, a B, yeah. I think his defense is good. Here's why. They've got, like, every single level of the second. I mean, their linebacking core isn't great, but they've got a really good cornerback room. They've got decent safeties, and they've got a really good defensive line with good pass rush. I don't know why they can't be a B. I mean, this defense has, has been solid the past couple years. They've had some really big games where they've stepped up. Again, they might not be one of the best units in the league, but they're still solid, and they're not going to be, like, get, like, absolutely, like, torched. It's just not going to happen. This defense is good enough to the point where you just, you expect them to, like, put out a good outing every single game. I mean, they're not going to, like, shut a team down every week, every week, but I still think they're, per again, they're a pretty good group. So, i got to give them a B. Let's get the special teams unit. All right, Cage York's their kicker. I mean, he had some ups and downs as a rookie, but he has a big leg, and I do expect him to be better in the clutch, clutch this year. Again, he had that huge game winner. So, again, did struggle at points last year for sure. I mean, he was good underneath. I get it. Um, he missed some short field goals, but... Uh, yeah, struggle is a little bit as a rookie, but I, I do expect him to be better this year. Again, really talented guy for sure. Corb work his kicks bombs, really solid punter. Uh, Dodge Eagles Jones, one of the better punter turners in the league. Uh, Dream can, um, um, Jakeem Grant Sr. also is a returner there as well. Jerome Ford, again, solid kick returner. He's not crazy great, but he works. And, uh, Charlie Hewlett, uh, ninth year at US, um, US, um, U UCF, solid long snapper. That's all I got there. With Cade York being young, I gotta probably give this special team to a C plus. It's not crazy great. They didn't have any super big woes last year. They're kind of just around average, but they've got a good punter, decent returners. I'll give them a C plus there. That comes out too. Uh probably six points. Let's get right to the overall um team depth. Alright, first off, uh Let's see quarterback depth. I'm probably going to give it about a C-. minus. It's good. It's, uh, it's not good, but it could be better, but it's whatever. <laughs> Running back depth, uh, probably a C. Wide receiver depth, B. It's good. Tight end depth, probably an A-. minus. It's D. It's pretty good. Uh, offensive line depth, uh, tackle depth is just not good, so i got to probably give it a C+. Plus. Uh, overall offensive depth, what do I give him? Uh, that was meh. That was meh. That was good. That was really good. That was meh. I'll probably give them like a, let's say a probably um, a C plus for their offensive depth. Defensive depth, linebacker depth, it's basically good, so B. Defensive line depth is probably a B minus. It's close to a B, just not there yet. Pastors depth, probably a B minus. Cornerback depth, probably a B plus. Safety depth, uh, C minus. So look at his overall team's depth. It's probably a B, B minus defensively overall. So. I mean, the Browns have okay depth. It's nothing crazy, but it's definitely, it, it works. So, yeah, that comes out to about 24 points for their depth. Let's talk about their team identity. All right, for Kevin Stefanski's offense, I think it's kind of going to be a weird group because as much as he threw the ball, like, with Deshaun Watson last year and let him drop back, I do think this run game has to be center stage because, again, you want to use Deshaun Watson to his full, fullest potential, but it will things will open up if they can use play action a lot more with them. But even then, it's like... You could run the ball on second and ten, and it wouldn't be the end of the world because not only it, again if it gets blown up, third down you always have a chance with Deshaun Watson. So I do think offensively Kevin Stavansky has a lot of room for error because he has an offense that is super talented, and, he's, and, and if Deshaun Watson can be that guy, he again he can make mistakes. They can like basically kind of throw, throw stuff around, and they're okay because they have their group to do it. On the other side, defensively, I mean with Joe Woods last year they were they were horrible in some games. I mean yeah. The talent overall on this roster defensively is really good. The only question is, wait, I even forgot who this was DC. Yeah, Jim Schwartz, my bad. Uh, Jim Schwartz, uh, Schwartz does have a lot of work to do for sure. He needs to get an established group overall. Overall, as they want to, they kind, they really didn't get in any sort of rhythm last year at all. I again, they have good talent. Like Martin Emerson Jr. thrived last year, not because of Joe Wood, just the fact that again he played so well. But the fact they actually now with even Turner who should be a lot more responsible and be able to co call consistent coverages, I think is huge. So I think they're gonna get like um a sort of a rhythm which they weren't able to last year. So I, I like what their defense is gonna do, but I don't know for sure. So 
Um, offensively, I think I'll probably give them, like, a B for their overall identity. Defensively, I don't know for sure what they're going to do, so I have to give them, like, probably a C-. minus. So, the Browns' identity, I don't know exactly what they're going to do, so i got to probably give them a C+. Like, it's kind of what I got there. Comes out to 15, 30 points for their overall team identity. Let's get to the overall Browns for 2023 roster grade. And this Browns roster falls right into the B range, which I think is perfect. I mean, the Browns, they've got a good roster, so... The only issue is, if Deshaun Watson can get back the way he was before, they've got probably an A-cal, A-cal roster. Maybe not an A-cal, probably an A-minus, because, yeah, the difference between him being an A and an A a B-minus is a lot, but again, it's really, I'm not going to lie, the Brown season does depend on Deshaun Watson. They've got the roster to win a lot of games, like, they, they don't have, a, like, an average part of this team. Every part of this team is a little bit, at least, at the very worst, a little bit above average, so... Yep, I gotta give him, again, it's really all on Deshaun Watson, so I gotta give him a B, 301 total points. It's a good roster, it works, yep, that's all I got for the Browns, 2022 roster grade, hope you guys enjoyed. Next team we got, pretty, they were tank bowl in 2022, but you never know, they could have a good 2023. I, again, really young roster, here's Robert Woods, again, their number one receiver. Take a guess on what team it is. All right, so still five completions to go to get there, as they motion out Woods. Goff trying to make it nine for nine, he wants a lot here, he wants Woods, he has Woods! And Robert Woods is in! Touchdown! A big strike, Jared Goff to Robert Woods, and the Rams are back in front on the 56-yard connection. They just give you so much to look at, so much to think about pre-snap, that it can be distracting at times as a defender.